everybody, uh, welcome back to part 5 of the Qatari 132 scale Spitfire build. Uh, last week I managed to get over the problems uh, with the lifting of the paint, got the uh, airframe uh, repainted completely, having stripped it down. Uh, and this week I've gone on to fit the decals to the model. They're really nice, uh, I think they're printed by Cartograph, so they've gone on without any trouble. Uh, there are one or two queries, I think, on the net about the colour of the codes, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on when we come to fit them. Uh, but uh, there's a lot to do, there's a lot of uh, work to do in the decal stage, and uh, we better get on with it. So I'll bring you over to the bench and show you how they've gone on. OK, we'll make a start, and uh, I'm going to be applying the decal straight from the sheet. Uh, no aftermarket, use the ones that are provided by Qatari. I have debated about uh, replacing the code letters. There has been some debate on the net about the shade that's been used for the print here. That it's a sort of a bluey grey colour. But the commonly accepted uh, colour for RAF codes at this time of the war anyway was uh, medium sea grey. But I have got access to a couple of colour photographs, original wartime colour photographs of Mark 1s. And uh, the colour does closely match, uh, to my eye at least, the colour that's printed here on the decal sheet. So I'm going to go with them. So I'm going to start uh, just by applying one of the fin flashes. And uh, the reason for that is that I just want to test out how they respond to application, whether or not I'm going to need any setting solutions on these. I believe that they're printed by Cartograph, so they shouldn't need any uh, microsol except for uh, where they've got to go over some bumps, say for the roundels here on this outer gun panel. It's got uh, a bump on it. And it might need a bit of sol on that, but uh, otherwise Cartograph usually respond fine to uh, just some application of some set. So that's what we'll do to start with. The reason for selecting the code is that uh, if anything does go wrong with it, I can repaint that. So it's not absolutely unique. If, for example, I was going to use uh, one of these roundels on the underside which has attached to them the location for wingtip steady and trestle uh, decal. Uh, I wouldn't be able to reproduce that. Not easily anyway. So uh, I'm going to go for one that I can afford to mess up if it uh, comes to it. Yeah, they're going down nice. The uh, set appears to be uh, pulling them in. All right, going nicely around the leading edge of the fin. Just leave that to grab for a moment. Okay, so um, they're going down fine with just the micro set they're very thin as soon as i put this decal on immediately it started to conform to the detail underneath so uh, they need some gentle treatment with them and i'll be very sparing with the microsol if it turns out that i need any So I think I've got the measure of them. We'll start to apply some of the other ones now.
I've just realised that um, there are two holes in this decal, which I wondered what they were. And it turns out that they're uh, the locations of the screws on this access hatch. So uh, that's an attention to detail that I've not seen on uh, a set of decals before. The raised rivets uh, on the rear fuselage of this kit uh, are a bit of a challenge for these decals, but it's starting to go down. Rather than microsol, I'm using some set here just to keep the decal soft until it conforms to these rivets. This is an unusual non-standard size roundel that was typical of 54 Squadron uh, in the uh, early part of the war. So what they've done here is they've uh, expanded the yellow band inwards and therefore reduced the blue. Uh, and at the same time they've reduced the outside diameter as well. So it's a smaller decal but the blue's reduced. So it's uh, quite a distinctive uh, feature of 54 Squadron at this time. So it's starting to settle down. I'll leave that for a few minutes. Uh, let it dry out a bit and see how far it goes down into the detail. So uh, it's getting there, but uh, we'll just leave it a little bit longer. And in the meantime, I'll put uh, one of the code letters on. can see that these are going to be controversial. They're certainly not uh, medium C grey. So the trick with these is uh, to work with them very carefully, very gently. They're very thin, which is needed uh, for the detail that's on the Qatari fuselage here. Uh, lesser quality of decal would struggle with this detail. So I'll carry on and work around the aeroplane and uh, give you some snippets of that progress as we go around.
It's important to get this roundly in exactly the right place. So the uh, decal has markings printed into it for the gun covers or the screws on the gun covers. These were indicators to just make sure to the uh, rigger that they'd got the screws fastened properly. Now this is a bit of a test for these decals because we've got this uh, bump in the gun cover. So I'll see how it goes down with the set and if needs be we might need to give it a very sparing application of Microsoft but we'll see. The uh, guide for applying this is we've got the walkway line here which goes just above the panel line or just forward of the panel line and this end of it uh, goes right up to the wingtip joint. So if you position that walkway line in the correct place the uh, integral screw decals will uh, align with the gun panel because it's not until you allow the decal to set a little bit and settle down uh, that you can see where the panel is underneath it. So that walkway line's a very good guide. Let's put some more set over the top and hope that that's enough. Just helping this decal uh, settle down, just puncturing some air bubbles out of it. A nice detail on these uh, underwing roundels is that they're not actually round. These were applied on the squadron, they're not factory applied. So they're in a very non-standard position and uh, the outline isn't perfectly round.
These are the uh, fastener alignment markings. They come in panels, uh, one for each uh, gun hatch. There's also some on the ammunition hatches here. That's a feature I've never seen on a Spitfire kit before. And I suspect that in service they would get worn off, obviously. Uh, the use of tools around the fasteners would probably remove the stenciling to a large extent. So I may just break some of those up a little bit. Uh, I'll just put one or two on the other side. Obviously these are going to be in black stenciling. These are printed with a little cutout for the ejector chute. So that helps the alignment of the decal as well. Katari supply uh, these decals which are uh, patches for the gun muzzles and uh, the, as you can see they're in a irregular pattern often uh, if manufacturers do provide these patches as decals they uh, provide them in nice neat geometric shapes which is uh, not what they look like so so it's another bit of an innovation The uh, decal sheet also has another smaller patch that you can use to completely cover the muzzle. But I'm going to leave just this first set on. I think that's a really nice detail how those uh, patches are so irregular. So the last job I've got to do for the decaling stage is to apply these. There are some white ones here which you won't be able to see but these are some more of the uh, fastener alignment decals which go around the engine cowling. And there's an awful lot of them so uh, I'll just put a couple on for you and then I'll do the rest off camera then we should be finished with this Obviously this is going to take uh, quite a bit of time to finish all these fasteners off. So uh, I'll just work around and uh, come back to you when it's all done just to show you what it looks like. Okay so that's all the decals fitted and uh, I don't want to see another one of those fastener decals anymore. There must be Oh, 18, 90 of them on the model altogether. And they're a real uh, candidate for silvering, uh, being so small. And if there had been uh, any lesser quality, I wouldn't have uh, tried to apply them. So I'm going to leave that uh, for a day or so to thoroughly dry the decals off. 
Then I'll give it a wash down with some uh, mild detergent just to get rid of the decal solution. And uh, we'll then be ready to do some weathering in the next part. Okay, so uh, that's the decals uh, all fitted. And uh, they were really high quality and they needed to be to fit over all the raised rivet deal on, detail on the rear of the fuselage. And uh, all these fastener decals uh, would have caused problems, I think, if the sheet hadn't been so well printed. I'm still not absolutely convinced about the uh, squadron codes. They still look a bit too blue to me. Uh, they did on the sheet and they've gone on uh, like that as well. But it's strange that from some angles they look perfectly okay. They look more like what we're used to. Uh, for grey squadron codes. Uh, then from other angles uh, they tend to pick up the blue a lot more uh, and I don't know what that is. But uh, what I'm going to do uh, just as an experiment I'll mock up a piece of plastic and paint it uh, in the camouflage colours the green and the brown and I'll apply some of the spare squadron codes from the other two decal options uh, in the kit. Uh, and I just want to test if the uh, final coat of a matte varnish will actually lighten them. It tends to do that with a model. The uh, gloss varnish and the uh, glossy decals tend to saturate the colours a little bit. So it might be that under a coat of matte varnish they return to something more like what we're used to. We'll have to see but anyway I wanted to build the kit as Qataria intended. Uh, and that's what they've uh, suggested the codes were like, so that's what I've done. But no doubt the argument will rage on uh, on the internet. There's already quite a few comments on forums about the uh, colour of the codes, so uh, no doubt that argument will go on for a while yet. But as I said, I'm going to leave the model for a couple of days, let it dry, give it a wash down, and then uh, in the next episode, part six, we can start to do some more weathering. I've already started that process with the underpainting, uh, but there's quite a few more techniques that I want to try out on the model, uh, and we'll do that next time in part six. So that'll be coming up uh, next week at the usual time, so uh, I hope you can join me for that one. Uh, in the meantime, look after yourselves, everybody. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.